Dr. Reed, where's the staff? I'm the first one here this morning, sir. Mm. Here, you, what are you doing here? Bank sleeping in Mr. Addison's office. Get out of here. Imagine waking up and seeing you first thing in the morning. Uh, what a way to start a day. Bank? Now let me tell you something else. If you don't have some blankets and a pillow put in this office, I want to quit working here. Banks, you're a disgrace to the newspaper profession. It isn't a profession, it's a game. Now run along, because I want to play with you. The same thing after every payday, drunk and disorderly. You know, Hessel, you're not really as bad as you seem. Nobody could be that bad. Here, have a little drink. You might put new life in an old body. That'll cost you your job. Boy. I'll see that you're fired from this paper as soon as Mr. Addison arrives. Ahoy. Listen, Hessel. There are 1,790 newspapers in the United States. And I've only worked on 16 of them. Tomorrow, you'll be free to connect with your 17th. Yeah? Well, if the old man does fire me, I promise to come in your office and kiss you goodbye. But aren't you afraid that he might have you fired? That's a little scheme of mine to get you my job. But you got to promise never to be late. Morning, pals. Hello. Hello, Steve. Get you a little early this morning? No, I was here first, except for Frank Marowell. Boy, is she raining. Well, either that or you've been taking a bath with your clothes on. Where is your clothes? Watch your step. Oh. Boy, it's sure raining out today. Uh, that makes the rumor official. Right. Hey, Squint. Wait a minute. I'm paid to go up and down, not wait. Well, you ain't paid so much you have to get technical about it. Here, get this full of Java and don't get any rain in it. Hey, what do I get for running all your errands? Didn't I give you two passes for her first sin last night? Yeah, it was a rotten show. Yeah, that's why I give you the passes. Right. that. Boy, I'm tired out myself. Up half the night with the baby. Who's baby? My wife. There. What a day, what a day. Uh, don't tell me it's raining outside. Even Noah never saw this much rain. Yeah, well, I think I'll drink a little of it for breakfast, then it won't be so much. Morning, Chief. Morning. What a day, what a day. And how? Do you know anything about this Freddy girl and the dope they found in her apartment? Freddy? Freddy. Here's the story of the Morning Herald by your wife. Looks like she beat you to it. Rose Freddy, queen of the underworld. Stood off the police department last night while she demolished the insides of her apartment at 341 First Street. The arresting officer, Thomas O'Ryan, that she was under the influence of mm, How cute. Where were you while all this was going on? I'm trying to remember. Let me see. I remember hearing that they were going to raid the Freddy gal's apartment. And? So I went to Joe Reno's speakeasy. That geography don't make sense. Well, you see, I had a sneaking hunch that Reno knows more about this narcotic ring in his telly. I remember having about four drinks of Reno's bar varnish, and I remember asking a lot of questions. Then I landed outside on my ear. What's Reno got to do with this Peretti case? Now, that's what I didn't find out. Well, give me a rehash and make it snappy. All right. Say, I wonder if the district attorney knows anything about this racket. I think I'll wake him up and find out. Oh, good morning, Mr. Reno. Well, how are you? How's the restaurant business these days? Well, Hensel, the restaurant business is all right, but I'm thinking of taking my advertising out of the express. One of your drunken reporters, a fellow by the name of Banks, came in my place last night 
and insulted Alderman Jungmeyer by asking him a lot of impertinent questions. He was also very insulting to me when I asked him to leave and made a lot of drunken threats. Oh, we've had several complaints about Banks. I'll see that he's fired at once. That's fine. Thank you. That'll cool Banks off all right. Did Harris fall? No. Yes, I know, Mr. Muller. I'm awfully sorry I woke you up. But you're the district attorney, aren't you? And if you're the district attorney, you ought to know something about these narcotic debts. Or maybe you're trying to hide something. Huh? Hey, you want to get an earful of what he's saying to that one? He's yelling like an opera singer. <laughs> Why, Mr. Muller, I have never heard such language coming from a public official. You should be ashamed, Mr. Muller. And let me tell you something else. I once knew a district attorney who was hung because he refused to give information to the newspapers. <laughs> What's that? You'll have me fired. <laughs> I'm afraid you're a little late. There's a couple of bids in ahead of yours. Well, I guess he doesn't know anything. I know something, Banks. You can down the cashier and get your money right now. Are you in again? What's the idea? The idea is that you sell one of our big advertisers. And I've taken the responsibility of discharging that's him at a, once. That's a big responsibility. Now, wait a minute, Hansel. As long as I'm city editor, I'll hire and fire my own staff. There you see, Smarty. He spends all his time fighting. Well, how about General Grant? I'm not warning you, Hansel. I'm telling you. Get out of my department and stay out. Don't hit him in the head, Arch. You'll bust your knuckles. Someday I'll step on him and squash him. You know, what I can't understand is how the cockroach exterminator ever missed that guy last time he was in the building. Well, I'll say one thing for you. You don't make my life a better rosa. Good morning, little loudspeakers of newspaper land. Good morning. Good afternoon. I couldn't find a cab. You mean you couldn't find one to fit you? <laughs> you know, we're still getting out an afternoon newspaper, even if it's raining. Imagine me giving advice to the loved one on a day like this. Now, Vera, you're not going to tell me it's raining outside. No. I sprinkle myself every morning. <laughs> it keeps me fresh. Oh, is that what does it? You won't be so fresh when you find out what Santa Claus left in the hall for you. Holy smoke, not, uh, not the wife. In person. Now, there's something to think about. It is, if I know my women. Ho, 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 he, he, he. Ha, 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 ho, ho. <laughs> Shut up. Good morning, dear. Well. Oh, is it raining outside? See, you and I are going to have a little talk. Why, well, certainly, dear. Shall we go inside? I can tell you all I've got to say right here. Gee, that's a swell hat you've got on there. Is that a new one? Steve, let's come to the point. Why, what's the matter, dear? What have I done? Where were you last night? Where was I last night? I, uh, well, didn't you get my message? What message? Well, my message. I, I told Hoffman to call you and... Wait a minute, I'll get that guy out here. Never mind, I know where you were. You and Deke Thomas were probably having a drinking bout somewhere. Well, yes, we did have a couple. And Where did drinking get him? There isn't a newspaper in this town that'll hire him back. And you're getting just like him. Well, now, Dick and I were working. We were working on, on that Peretti case. And by the way, dear, that was a swell story you had in the Morning Herald. So you were working on the Peretti case, eh? Uh -huh. Well, you weren't with the raiding party. You weren't at the jail when they brought her in. You must have covered that case by remote control. Well, now, there's more to that case than appears on the surface. You think so, do you? Well, where do you suppose she gets her dope? I suppose you know all about no, it. No, but I got a pretty good hunch. Oh. You're always having hunches about something. And now it's dope. Dope peddlers hiding under cradles. Mothers crying for it. Fathers yelling about it. With your wild imagination, you'll probably have me mixed up in this thing. All right, all right. But where do you suppose these narcotics get their laughing powder? From China? By carrier pigeon? The trouble with you is you get all your ideas out of a bottle. Don't you suppose that the district attorney and the police department know what's going on? Oh, there are a lot of saps. Well, that isn't what I came here to talk about anyway. Well, I don't see why you should be sore at me. 
I'll tell you why. For two years, I've been trying to make a home for us. And last night, he was coming home to his favorite dish, liver and onions. I'll get Hoffman just a minute. He should have called. faithful little wife sits like a dumbbell to 11 o'clock entertain yourself with a plate of cold liver. Oh, Marge, I tried to get word to oh, you. If it were the first time, I wouldn't say anything. It's been going on for two years, and I'm through this time. Well, now, Marge, you don't mean that. Why not? If I'm going to be a widow, I might as well make it official. But you know this newspaper game just as well as I do. I've got to make a living, ain't I? You're always blaming something besides yourself. You're always making promises and breaking them. And I'm always forgiving you. Oh, last night I thought it all over. I said to myself, what's the use? Steve, I want a divorce. Well, good morning, good morning. Well, I don't suppose you young married people see enough of each other evenings, but you have to be spooning in dark hallways in the morning. O'Neill! 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 Say, where's O'Neill? Yes, sir. I want... Oh, how about that story? Where is it? I... Ah! Well, say, Miss Wilson here yet? Miss Wilson? Yes, sir. Miss Wilson? How about, uh, Hoover's speech? Did the Senate ratify that Grimes bill? Say, who covered that Sibley fire? How about Banks? Did he get his story? Wasn't drunk again last night, was he? Well, when did this come in? Just now, sir. Oh. Miss Wilson, Miss Wilson. Yes, sir. Don't yell, don't yell, doggone it. I'm not deaf. Take a note to Margaret. My dear Barclay, hereafter I want the composing room kept open an hour after we go to press. Your men are not allowed to fight. Say, hey, you get me a proof on that just as quick as you can, will you? Yes, sir. Your men are not allowed to climb and have to jump into their clothes and run away every time they hear a bell ring. Well, Marge, I guess you're right. I guess you got it coming to you. There's no other man, is there? No, thanks. I think I'll stick to newspapering for a while. Oh, that's all right. Oh, have you got a good lawyer? What difference does that make? Well, you don't have to get sore. I just happen to know a guy that's pretty good, that's all. There's no rush about that. I just wanted to let you know where I stood. Well, how about grounds? You gotta have grounds. What's the matter with non-support? I wouldn't be telling any fibs about that. How about mental cruelty? Mental cruelty, if you like. What's the difference? All right, we'll make it mental crew. Oh, I don't blame you, Marge. I guess I am kind of a bum at that. You're not really a bum. You're just irresponsible. You'd be one of the best newspaper men in this town if you'd only quit drinking. Maybe so. I was talking to Dr. McCoy yesterday. He says drinking is a mental habit. He says you actually get more stimulation out of tea. Yeah, and then you turn into a Chinaman and open a laundry. Watch this stuff. Oh, say, how about the laundry? I mean, my clothes and things. How am I going to get them? Well, let me know when you come in. I have them all packed for you. Oh, I'd rather not go up. Couldn't you send them to me? Yes, I can do that. I'll have the janitor bring them. Thanks. Goodbye, Steve. So long, kid. The boss wants you. O'Neill? No, Mr. Addison. He's pretty sore about something. Do tell. Kensel's been in there with him. Oh. Well, well, well. Here comes the lion with the lamb's hair cut. My dear Miss Thumbtex, my wife does not understand me. What shall I do? Reach for a lucky. You didn't start reaching soon enough. <laughs> hey, copy. You old tattletale. Say, Vance, come in here and the door. We're not going to make it. I've got it to raise. That are not found on Vance. Hold on, boys. We're going around the curve. Anyway, we're going to see the welfare of the people of this city. This editorial will be headed on the heading of Fair Expression to Mayor Barbara. Doggone, yes, he is. 
Accept it. Say, you have to talk louder. So much noise in here. Where were you last night? I'll bite. Where was I? What? Don't ask riddles. You bet you're on the griddle. You got drunk. You went to Reno's cafe. You insulted all of them in Young Meyer. You threw fakes at Reno when he asked you to leave. Say, what kind of a name are you trying to give this paper? You trying to ruin our circulation? You want me to answer those all at once, or do you want separate answers? What's that? Oh, what difference does it make? I'm sick of this bum racket anyhow. It isn't even a racket. It's a disease that gets into your blood and rings you out like an old mop. What are newspapers good for anyhow? Two minute scandal for a lot of dumb Polacks that can't even read English. And what are they good for after that? Something to put under carpets. Plugs for rat holes. Wrapping paper for bootleggers. Bed quilts for bums in the park and, and a lot of other things. So. That's the way you feel about it, is it, you young whippersnapper? That's the way I feel about it, you old flap doodle. Why, thanks, I... I used to think you had something in you, but I see I was mistaken. You're a quitter. You're yellow. And worst of all, you're not even a good newspaper man. Who says I'm not? Throwing mud at the honorable profession of journalism. And why? Just because you fell down on a news story. You can't talk to me like that. I've forgotten more about news than you'll ever know. Sent out on an assignment. And what happens? Drunk and disorderly in a cheap speaking. But where do you suppose news comes from? The old lady's home? Oh, Bob. Your wife's a better newspaper man than you are. Why, you wrinkled old squash. I was after a real story last night, but it's just as well I didn't get it. You wouldn't dare print it if I had. You can't intimidate me. I'll print anything that's founded on fact. You wouldn't know a fact if it walked in here and threw its arms around you. No. I know a good newspaper man when I see one. I'll show you who's a good newspaper man. I'll put a story on your desk someday that'll turn this town upside down. Ah, uh, get out of here before I lose my temper. Well, I'm a newspaper man, huh? Why, what are you talking about? You're an insult to the profession. Yes, I suppose so. Well, you can take this paper. I worked on better papers than this, you know. I don't have to Why, sit you around here. Why, talk to me like that. No, it. I don't have to talk to you like Get out of here. Who's winning, Daniel or the lion? If you eat those words, you old buzzard. Get out, you're fired. Don't you come back. Ah. What happened? You ought to quit the newspaper game and publish bedtime stories for weak-minded children, you... What's up? <laughs> Brilliant young reporter thrown out on ear. Wife and family destitute. Fired? I believe that's what I understood him to say. That's the third time this month. Well, maybe I can patch it up again. Well, if you can do it this time, you'll get the first prize in patchwork. O'Neill! Hey, yeah. O'Neill! O'Neill! Hello, Tiny. Hello, Joe. Hello, Bright Eyes. Oh, Flatfoot. Say, Nick. Say, are you going to write up that Peretti case? There is a rumor to the contrary. I want you to get my name spelled right. It's Ryan, R-Y-A-N. The Herald here spells it O Ryan, and I'm kind of burned up about it. Oh, what are a couple of O's among friends? Uh, the O Ryans are a lot of dizzy arms. I'm a cork man myself. Whoopsie, salute! It would take a lot of torpedoes to sink you, big girl. <laughs> now, hey, I tell you, compass to my successor, he spells beautifully. Him? Fine. Okay, Flatfoot. Lay off the puppy. Okay, Orion. Ryan. Someday it'll be just too bad. Did you get the gate, Steve? Me, no. The place was just getting too crowded, so I quit to make more room for Vera. Well, it won't take much to fill the hole you'll leave. Right. That's why I recommended Pell for my job. Yeah, well, if I had your job, I'd do more writing and less talking. There, I guess that puts me in my place, huh? Hey, who's got my jackknife? Don't look at me. I gave it back to you. Uh, well, can't lose this. This is a wedding present for my loving wife. No, we are losing it. Why don't you fasten the ball and chain to it? Well... Goodbye, little buttercup. I hope you'll miss me. I'll probably have spells. <laughs> Listen, if you start to waste away, save me the slow motion movie rights, will you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
So long, everybody. So long. Bye. 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 A long time before you get another newspaper man like me around here. I hope that's true. Yeah, I hate to see him go. He's a good natured slob. Never sleep under that Garibaldi statue. Why? Why do pigeons have to build their nests on statues? And why art thou so blue this lovely morning? I've got my troubles. Domestic or professional? Both. Good. Then there's nothing to interfere with our drinking. Oh, I don't blame Margie. I guess I am kind of a tramp. But that old dried up alligator in there burns me up. Ooh, thou keep the thought pure. He knows I could never quit newspapering. So the old crow cans me twice a month just to rub it in. Journalism is but a faithless stuff. Bum newspaper man, am I? I'll throw a story in his face someday that'll make his ears rattle. Anger does not become thy placid brow. Well, do you blame me for being sore? In another couple of days, I'd have had Reno's mob all wrapped up and delivered. I have a noble idea. Well, let's hear it. If pleasure be thy bent, let us return to the scene of last night's revel. But ain't it a little soon after what happened at Reno's yesterday? Ooh, wreck not the dead yesterday. Wreck only the beautiful tomorrows. Well, I feel like wrecking something. Let's go. Let's away. Sweet Adeline, my Adeline, What are you going to do about this guy, Banks? I'm telling him he's nothing to worry about. He's just a harmless drunk. He's smarter than you think he is. He's not so smart. I had him canned this morning. He said you know who he is. Okay. Okay, Pete. You can't shut that guy up by canning him. What good's a newspaper man without a newspaper? Well, we got to think of ourselves, Joe. You ain't the only one in this racket. I'll handle this. You ain't going to let him come in here again, are you? Why not? He amuses me. That's where you fellows are all wrong. As my dear old grandmother used to say to me, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Yeah? You take my tip and you'll use a fly swatter. Listen, that loud mouth ready to start squawking, we'll all be getting our meals to iron bars. Yeah. So, be right with you. Now, if you were smart little boys, you'd pay more attention to your grandmothers. My bitter friend, Mr. Reno. Oh, he's out picking up the plates you threw at him last night. <laughs> I do hope he isn't upset. Oh, no. He enjoys it. It helps business. Need we delay further, my good man? No, you will have to wait till Joe comes back. Procrastination is the thief of thirst. <laughs> As I was saying to George, I never seen a newspaper guy yet that wasn't a lousy, backbiting, yellow dog at heart. In a short time, the knuckle party was in full progress. I hope that neither you guys are newspaper men. No, indeed. Ex-newspaper men. I'm glad to hear it. I wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, don't bother about us. So I says to him, all these newspaper guys, they're just a lot of no-good bums. With no more spine than a jackrabbit. And you couldn't get one of them to fight if you spit in his eye. As I was saying, Dick, 
You take the fine, upstanding type of thug that peddles dope to school children and penny candy. Well, I once knew a newspaper guy that got drunk enough to talk nasty to a real man. There wasn't enough left of him to cremate decently. As I was saying when you were so politely interrupted, it's a shame to hang so many innocent murderers. Rat traps would be much cheaper. Just so. You know, I very recently heard of the sad case of two benevolent and persecuted hopslingers who were punished by being put in a barrel with a skunk. Fortunately, the skunk died. He was probably bored to death by their repartee. Well, well. This is an unexpected pleasure. Well, if it isn't our genial host. See? Next to my respectable restaurant? Of course not. Speakeasies take root and strange. But that isn't why I came to see you. I suppose you wish to discuss your favorite topic? Narcotics? No. No, I'm afraid our friendly little war is over. You distressed me. What has happened? I'm celebrating my dismissal from the ancient and honorable institution of muck slinging. Need we delay the celebration further? Oh, I'm sorry. Pete, some of our very best. I thought maybe you'd heard, Joe. I'm surprised. I heard you were such a good newspaper man, too. Hmm. I knew too much. It was beginning to hurt advertising. Oh, it's a pity. You know, you'd make a great publicity man for restaurants and speakeasies. A change of old feller. Oh, well, that's a very nice offer, Joe, but uh, I'm taking a sea trip to drown the troubles. I'll miss you. Terribly. Yeah, it's too bad to interrupt our little war. We were having such a good time, huh? I believe if you had your way, you'd make a criminal out of me in no time. Yep. In another couple of days, I'd have had the goods on you, Joe. Really? What a pity to lose your job on the threshold of success. That Peretti girl's confession would have been a sensation. What was the name? Peretti. Rose Peretti. You know. Oh, yes. I believe I did read something about that in the paper. <laughs> You're not trying to connect me with that, too. You should have read the confession I got from her this morning. But I handed you a great kick. Have you got it with you? No. I left it on old man Addison's desk. Oh, but don't worry about it, Joe. He won't know what it is if he sees it. He'll probably throw it in the wastebasket. <laughs> it's a shame to throw one of your romances in the wastebasket. Well, it's his own fault. He shouldn't have canned me. Well, I've got to go down and get my passports. Well, how about a little farewell drink with an old enemy? Well, if you don't mind, Joe, I think I'll have some of my own. I can't handle that pre-war stuff of yours. <laughs> well, happy days. I'll send you a postcard from China. Over the river. Aren't you going to help me pack, Dick? I want to take just one sock and a little large bun. All right. Oh, that's all right. I, I don't like that guy's look. Anyhow, he's not getting out right now. Well, do you know any more smart cracks? Are you going to let him walk out of here after what he said about that Peretti confession? He never got any confession. He was just bluffing. Oh, yeah? Well, I guess they're getting off by that Edison sack. Don't tell me. I can lick my way to wild wow, the bars. Hey, did you notice anything funny? You mean those two bums? You see Reno's face when I mentioned that Peretti confession? Oh, uh, who wants to look at his face? He's worried. He thinks I got a statement from the Peretti girl involving him. Well, haven't you got it? No. But I'm going to get it. I'll break a leg triumph. If you don't bump that guy off pretty soon, I'm going to do it for you. Why be rough? 
when you don't have to. I know. Your grandmother's going to get you into a lot of trouble someday. Supposing this Peretti dame did make a squawk, what then? How can she? I've got it fixed so she can't see anyone at the jail. Suppose they let her out. Then we'll send her on a little trip till this thing blows over. Hello? Hello, Stephen? When? This morning? What time? Well, why didn't you do something about it? You're a fine shyster lawyer. Where did she go? What's up? They let Peretti off this morning. The first case. Where is she now? Well, you find her and keep her quiet. Till I get back. If she's done any squawking, you know what to do. Where are you going? I'm going to call on this bird Addison, just in case. Well, what about this guy, Banks? Get a hold of him. And use your own judgment. Oh, Sharky, meet me in front of the express office. Yes, sir. That guy and his grandmother make me sick. Let's go. Did the husband shoot the other guy? Of course not. What a horrible idea. He joined in the chorus, and after a hearty lunch of bird seed, they all flew away to never, never land. <laughs> Read it yourself. Miss Wilson! Miss Wilson! Miss... Say, are you still working here? One never knows. From day to day. Never, never, Why, certainly I want you to be gay. But you're not going to be gay on my time. You're going to type right of there. Why don't you write on it? Say, what, uh, say, what do you think this is? This is a newspaper office, not a summer office. Oh, go on, Miss. Say, Miss Wilson, you got my bottle up and give me a time? I was just going, sir. Hey, what, well, hurry up. What are you trying to do? Stop me to death? Oh, Mr. Anderson. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Well, what do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I'm busy. Have you got a few minutes to spare? No, I haven't. I'm not made of minutes. Well, this is very important. One of our big advertisers is very anxious to meet you. Say, I'm not entertaining advertisers. I'm running know, a newspaper. The first thing I know, you want me to be giving cheese here yes, in the office. Yes, man here. O'Neill. O'Neill. Say, look at here. Bring him in tomorrow or next week or next month or what? next year. Yes, oh, I'm busy. Uh, say, what's the matter with this paper? Why were you late with that Mahoney story? Well, sir, we're a little short-handed today. Short-winded? Who's short-winded? I said we're short-handed. Oh. Oh. Banks, eh? I don't suppose we can run a paper without Banks, is that it? Call me an old flap doodle, did he? Well, he can't run me. I want him kept out of this office. I've already given orders, sir. Orders? You don't have to give any orders. I'll give the orders around here. He can't scare me. When I get too old to fight my own battles, I'll roll over and die, dog. Got it? No. Lovely disposition. Well, that's it. Did you arrange it? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. He, he's, he's very anxious to meet you. Well, that's fine. Shall we go right in? Oh, uh, uh, uh just a few minutes. You see, uh, you see, uh, he's rather hard to get at. Oh, I see. Well, I thought that being a big advertiser and... Oh, uh, of course, of course. He, he's very anxious to meet you, but, uh, I think someday next week it'll be better. Well, I'm unusually anxious to meet him today. I don't get down this way often. Oh, I understand perfectly. I'll go in and see him again in a few minutes. Now, uh, in the meantime, let us talk over your new advertising campaign, huh? Oh, yes, Now, yes. as I understand it, you want a, a full page on, on fat. Yes, yes, to be sure. That's fine. Now, the heading will read, Reno's Restaurant Incorporated. All the food that's fit to eat. Now we can run this in bold type and close in a very nice border. 
Of course, you'll want a border, won't you? Yes, of course. We should have a border. Get this out right away, and I'll see the old man as to whether he wants a two or three column spread. Right on. Hello, Margie. Hello, Art. Thanks, Snappy. May I have that Webster wire as soon as it comes in? Okay. Well, <laughs> moving in? Well, no, not exactly. Is Steve here? Steve, why didn't you hear what happened? Happened? I hope nothing's happened to Steve. Well, not as serious as that. He's just quit the newspaper business again for a change. The paper cut, you see. You know, you're a genius at this sort of thing, Mr. Hensel. Well, you know, I, I've been at this a very long time. Excuse me. Hello. Hansel speaking. The press room. Say, what's the idea of ringing me on an outside phone? What have we got our office phone for? Hello. Hello. Well, they'd call me on an outside wire. That is hard, isn't it? Well, the office phone must be out of order. Oh, just run your eye over that. I'll be back in a few minutes. Certainly. Don't hurry. Oh, I've got lots of time. see your side of it. Naturally, it looks very much to me as though Steve didn't care anymore. Doesn't it look that way to you? Sure. I think you're doing the right thing. You don't think maybe I was a little hasty? Not at all. I think you're a glutton for punishment. I wouldn't hurt Steve for the world. Do you know where I can find him? <laughs> he moves around too fast for me. You might as well try to find the lost car. <laughs> Steve! What the? Oh, hello, Marge. I didn't expect to see you here. I came because I... I brought the suitcase. Oh, thanks. Is that all? So is that fossilized old baboon in his office? Now, don't go in there, Steve. Wait till you cool off. I want to see this baby while I'm red hot. Steve, you've been drinking. Please be careful. Well, what's that to you? We're all washed up, aren't we? Now, Steve, don't be a sap. Give me a chance. Hey, who's doing you know all this yelling out here? So, you're going to your back again, are you? Any happy return? Please. You're, you're drunk. Uh, you'll think I'm drunk by the time I get through with you. Get into that office. So, I'm a bum reporter, am I? You can't scare me. I'm a rotten newspaper man, am I? You can't work here anymore. Who wants to work in this dump? I got a story here that's going to turn this town upside down. Ah, uh, you haven't got any story. You're drunk again. Yeah, punch drunk. I met a couple of Reno's men outside. Say, you can think of more alibis than any sauce I ever met. Yeah, well, what do you think about this, dog, Garnia? What is it? It's a confession from Rose Peretti. A confession? A confession? Where'd you get it? How, who wrote this? Where, who said this? Well, what do you know? Now, uh, there's a story there that'll make your hair curl. It involves Reno and his whole rotten gang. And it doesn't stop there, either. Oh, what a story, what a story. Thanks, all of you had it in here. Wait till I publish this. You're not going to publish it. Oh, now, Banks, don't talk like that. Uh, I'm not working for you anymore. You fired me. Say, give me that confession, dog, go on you before I lose myself. You try and get it. I scooped the whole town on this story in my own time. And I'm going to have it published, too. But not in your punk sheet. I'm going to sell this to a decent newspaper. Sam, Steve, wait a minute. Say, look here. Look, wait a minute. I'm going to give you a $10 raise. I'll make an order out on the cashier right now. Make it 25 <laughs> Say, doggone you, you ruined me. I'm not made of money. All right, I'll see you later. I'm running right over to the Herald office. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't go. Don't go. I, I'll give in. But it's a doggone outrage. There. That's my confession. I suppose I'm still a bum newspaper man? Who said you were? Did, but you're going to take it back right now. You're the best newspaper man in this town. Ah. The trouble with me is I talk too darn much. <laughs> now, give me that confession. Well, it's all right this time, but don't oh. you ever let it happen again. No, here, Steve, go out and get yourself a clean shirt. You look like a bum. All right. And hurry on back. We've got a lot of work to do. Say, I think I'll go out this other way. Those thugs of Reno's might still feel playful. Hey, another thing. Don't you get drunk? No, not too drunk. If you come back here drunk, you're fired. Hello. 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, confession of uh, Freddy girl exposes big dope ring. Uh, uh, hey, Steve! Say, what's the, what's the district attorney's number? Hempstead 3000. All right, get out of here. Hello, Hempstead 3000. Yes, hurry, hurry. Hello. Hello, hello. Well, are they still at it? He's been in there a long time. Do you think everything's all right? Well, they've quit yelling at each other. That's something. I never saw Steve so violent. And I feel maybe that I'm responsible. Oh, he'll be all right as soon as he gets it out of his system. They're too quiet all of a sudden, this is me. Supposing you just put your head in the door, huh? Not me, lady. Not me. I know those birds too well to interfere in their family quarrels. <laughs> they have these fights about twice a week just to prove they're not effeminate. But they always wind up in each other's arms singing Mother McCree. Even so, I can't help worrying about Steve. He's such a kid. You know, Margie, I think you were miscast. You should have been his mother. Back so soon? Well, I've been all over this building trying to find out who called me on the phone. Nobody seems to know anything about it. Probably someone just kidding. Well, if I find out who it was, I'll teach him a lesson. I won't have any jokers about this office. Well, you got any idea? Say, I wonder... I don't understand. A strange thing happened. This fellow Banks is quite a practical joker, isn't he? He's worse than that. Why? Oh, no reason. I just thought perhaps he might have called you on the phone. I saw him come out of Addison's office just before you returned. Well, I can't imagine him being in there. I assure you he was fired this morning. They were having a violent argument, and Banks used a lot of cuss words. It was very threatening, but he's that way with everybody. In fact, he threatened me again when he came out of the office. Well, I'm going to put a stop to Oh, this. don't bother. I realized he'd been drinking. Well, he must be kept out of here. I want to just what Banks said to you. Oh, some other time. It's nothing. Let's go over the copy. I, uh, I just remember an appointment. Mm, as you like. I want you to know how I feel. I understand perfectly. Now about the border. He doesn't look very happy. He's probably had his name spelled wrong again. There's somebody in this joint that thinks they're funny. It's a funny business, big boy. Hi, down, folks. <laughs> Listen, Irish, if you don't keep them principal pushes of yours under control, I'm going to start something. What's the matter? Look at that. Is that funny? What do you call that? It's concrete. <laughs> Shut up. This knife came from one of those windows and hit me right on the conk. Did it bend the blade? Did she do it? Not me. I always get my man. Someday. Now listen, Iris. I'm a cop. I ain't no target. Let me see that knife. That's funny to see his knife. Hmm. So that's who it was, eh? Where is he? He's inside. But he wouldn't throw a knife at you, Ryan. No, it probably jumped out the window. Well, I'll wait for him. And you'd better get prepared to be a widow. Fun is fun and all that. Just kidding and calling me names is bad enough. But when it comes to throwing knives at officers, that ain't going to be funny this season. You know, I've been on this force for 25 years. Ah! Ah! What happened, Jack? Sounded like a woman's voice. <laughs> Open that window, quick! <laughs> Something must have happened. I'll be back in a few minutes. How is he? Is his heart beating? He's gone all right. The gas did it. You mean he's dead? 
Here's that all right. Somebody send for the coroner. Hurry up on you boys, yeah. quick. Yeah, this looks serious. This ain't no place for you, Mrs. Banks. He's gone all right, boys. Well, what are you all standing around here for? You know, we've got a newspaper to get out. Let's have a story. Huffman. Company civic activity. Right away. You take his home line. Write it up well. Take the newspaper end of it, you. Come on here. Let's get to work. Anybody think you were sleeping up here? Come on now. Well, I don't understand is how this gas blew up with them windows closed. Neither do I. Wait a minute. Come here, Ryan. Why? This wasn't an accident. The old man has been murdered. Murdered? That tube has been cut. What makes you think he was murdered? He's been cut all right, clean through, and with a, with a knife. He wasn't cut with a knife. It's, why, it's all rotten. It, it must have come loose. So that's where the knife came from. Sorry, Mrs. Banks, but I've got to do my duty. He didn't do it! He didn't do it! He can't do anything like Police that! Police headquarters. Brace up, kid. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Ryan. Hey, get a hold of Steve Banks. Newspaper reporter. There are all the boys know him. Don't let him get away. He's wanted for murder. Oh, he didn't do it. Oh, this is terrible. He's been murdered. Murdered? Do they suspect anyone? Thanks, of course. He cut the gas tube. They're looking for him now. Hello. Hello. Get me Mr. Morris. Hello, Sergeant. What's up? Say, don't let anyone leave this building until the coroner gets here. Okay, Sergeant. Watch that door. I'll hear him. Call me as soon as you get him. Yes. Really, Mr. Hensel, I can't afford to get mixed up in this. I suppose it's all right if I leave? Certainly. No doubt they'll want your testimony at the trial. I can always be reached. Let me see. Uh, the elevators are down this way? Yeah, but you ain't gonna use them. Why not? Nobody leaves the building until further orders. I'll vouch for him, officer. Drop your head off. Nobody leaves the building. I understand. Just a matter of form. Hey, shut it up. Quit shoving. I'll give you a good suck in the nose. Ah, uh, shut up. There he is, Sarge. I caught him sneaking out of a barber shop. Hey, Flatfoot. And I gotta get his hair cut in this town without having that spine yanked loose by one of your big beef wrestlers? The next haircut you get won't cost you a cent. Well, what's the idea of all the bulls? Well, what's happened, Art? What's up? Oh, not Margie. Nothing's happened. Quit, darling. Quit kidding. Let me in on this. Oh, you don't remember nothing, eh? I suppose it's that bum booze you've been drinking. Maybe this will refresh your memory. The old man. He ain't dead, is he? He's dead, all right. Well, I only left him just a little while ago. Well, that's the way he wanted to go. With his boots on. Why did you kill him? He wasn't murdered, was he? Oh, I don't want to croak the old man. Well, you don't think I did it, do you? Are you going to complain? Don't talk, Steve. They don't know a thing. Margie. You don't think so, too? Margie. Margie! You couldn't hurt anybody, Steve. You couldn't hurt a fly and mean it. Well, I guess it don't look very good for me, huh? All right, Ryan. I'm ready to talk. But I'd like to talk to you alone. 
All right, get inside. Stick around and watch this door, and you take care of all those other doors. Okay, okay Sarge. Sarge. Hey, quit that racket. How can I work? Have you gone through his desk? Maybe he's got some guns or something around here. Oh, shut up and go back to the door. Right over there. Oh, here's someone now. Where's the uh, officer in charge here? He's inside. Are you from the district attorney's office? Well, the district attorney couldn't talk to himself. Phelps is my name. Fourth Jeopardy. Yes, Mr. Phelps. How long ago was the body discovered? Half an hour. That's strange. Why, Edison telephoned the office a half hour ago. Said he had an important message for the district attorney. Did you discover the body? Me? Why, no. I Who did? The secretary. And where is he? She's here. She's fainted. Fainted? Well, hold her. There's a gentleman in my office who has some very important testimony. Well, hold him. Has the coroner arrived yet? Well, here he is now. Oh, uh, I'm in charge here. The body is just in sight. Good. I'll get a look. All right. Oh, are you, uh, Officer Moran? Ryan, who are you? Phelps, the district attorney's office. This is a very important case. You better send for the district attorney. I'm in charge here. Oh. Have you any uh, suspects? Ken, is he under arrest? Not yet. I've been doing a little investigating. Well, I'll do the investigating. He's got to be charged with something, ain't he? He's charged with the murder of Mr. Anderson. I'll do the charging. Detain him as a material witness. You're detained. So I hear. Guard him carefully and see that no one leaves this building. Oh, shut up. Please, won't you let me help you? You keep out of this. You'll get me in trouble. Maybe you are in trouble. You're accused of a terrible crime. What do you care? You're all through with me. You don't understand, Steve. I only want to help you. Come on, get out of here. Oh, well, don't you understand me, please? I love you. You mean that? No one must talk to the prisoner. Prisoner must be held in communicado. In where? He mustn't talk to anyone. Oh, be seated, madam. You're not to leave the building. Okay, kid. Let me handle it. Exactly. He died of asphyxiation. The gas tube was cut with a pair of scissors. Any other evidence? There's a knife someone threw out the window. Hmm. Gas tube was cut with this knife. Is this your knife? Yes, it is, but... Never mind. Just one thing I'd like to know. Anything you say may be used against you. Who was in that room with the old man after I left it? You were the last to leave that office bank, so you know it. We have a witness here to prove it. A witness? A witness. Bring the witness in. Thank you, charge with his ethnic crime. Are you ready to make a statement? He hasn't done anything. Quiet. Well, I may make a statement later. Thanks to warn you, the evidence is against you. You're notorious for getting into drunken brawls and abusing people while under the influence of intoxicating beverages. Are we having a trial right here, or is this just a rehearsal? You were discharged by the dead man this morning. Came back here to his office, seeking revenge. You threatened him. There was a struggle. The old man was struck to the floor, and as he lay there, gasping for breath, you cut the gas tube with a pen knife, Threw the knife out of the window and attempted to escape. Stop. You have any right to talk to him. Am I warn you? I'm not afraid of you. You have no right to accuse him of something he didn't do. The gas tube was cut all right. I guess I ought to know. I cut it myself. Margie, she didn't do anything of the kind. She's saying that to protect me. Just a minute. He's yeah. irresponsible, Mr. Phelps. Don't pay any attention to him. I know what I did. Keep out of this, Margie. I know what I'm doing. Why, Ed? Why did you cut that gas tube? I'll tell you why. I saw right away that Mr. Addison had died of heart failure or something. I reached down and shoved the gas to me because, because I thought it would make a sensational story for my paper. Well, she's not telling the truth. I am. I know what I did. Mrs. Banks, I'm told you as an accessory after the fact. No. The deceased did not die of asphyxiation. He died of a blow on the head. Hmm. Hold that for evidence. It may have fingerprints on it. Yes, it's so. Right in here, please. That's all I wanted to know. There's your witness, Mr. Phelps. Would you mind stepping this way a minute? Certainly not. Well, well, Joe, I knew you'd been here, but I thought you'd made your getaway. Yes, I warn you, this is a serious matter for you. It was serious until the master mind dropped in. Why, uh, this isn't the first time he's abused, Mr. Reno. No, and it won't be the last. Mr. Phelps, I'm ready to make you a statement, but I want to write it out in my own way. Watch him. I don't want any tricks. 
Don't start anything. Not much. But, uh, we know. Where did you first come in contact with the prisoner? I'd rather not say. Well, go ahead and tell him, Joe. It'll hand him all a good laugh. Quiet. Quiet. It's your duty, Mr. Reno, as a citizen. And what a citizen. Quiet. Go on. I first met this person when he came in my restaurant. Speak easy, Joe. He was always drunk and always abusive. And some of my customers had come to consider him mentally unbalanced. That's the first true thing you've said so far. Mm, that's important. You, uh... You say the prisoner showed signs of insanity? Well, I have to be nuts to eat in Reno's restaurant. Keep the... Keep the prisoner quiet. Shut up. Sure. Did I cut the gas pipe first, Joe, or after? Quiet. Go on. Well, this afternoon I called on my friend, Mr. Hensel, to discuss some advertising. That's right. Through the door of Addison's office, I heard Banks threaten Mr. Addison. This was followed by sounds of a scuffle. Soon Banks emerged from the office, threw something out of the hall window, and hurriedly left the building. Wait a minute. Was Hensel in the office of mine? Atta girl, Margie. I am conducting this investigation. Were you at? Were, uh, were you in the office at the time? Why, no, I... You uh, probably got a phone call. Did you get a telephone call? Joe, I'm surprised at you. That telephone gag's got whiskers. I'm asking the question. Uh, did you get a telephone call? Well, yes. I was called into the press room. And while you were out of your office, Reno slipped across the hall and murdered the old man in cold blood. I don't mind, Mr. Phelps. Is that all you wish of me? Uh, yes, thank you for your testimony, Mr. No, that'll be all. Thank you. Don't let that guy get away. He won't stop till he reaches Siberia. You can always reach me at this address, Mr. Phelps. Better stick around, Mr. Reno. I am conducting this investigation, Sergeant. You may go, Mr. Reno. He can go if he likes, but I won't be responsible if my cuts get a little rough with him. I'll stay, Mr. Phelps. If it pleases the officer. Are you trying to make a fool of me in front of all these people? I should say not. You're doing pretty well all by yourself. What? I demand his arrest for the murder of Mr. Addison. Mr. Phelps, I said I was ready to make a statement, and here it is. Here, I right. Get this on the press and ready to roll. If we ever got scooped on a murder in our own office, the old man will never forgive us. What's on that paper? I'll tell you what's on it. It's the story of a rotten gang of dope peddlers headed by Joe Reno that's had this town by the throat for months. That's a strong statement. Preposterous. I don't mind. I've been working on Joe for a long while. The old man and I were going to spring it in today's edition. We had a confession from Rose Peretti spilling Reno's beans. Reno wanted that confession, and he murdered the old man to get it. That tale's the fabrication of a lunatic. What facts have you to support these charges? Where is this confession? It was on Addison's desk, but Reno destroyed it, of course. But the pretty gal will be here any minute now. Maybe Joe would like to hear the story from her own lips. Wait a minute. I've got bad news. Rose Peretti was found dead half an hour ago. <laughs> Oh. You covered that too, did you, Joe? You're smarter than I thought you were. What? Who is this Peretti girl? Don't you read the papers? She was one of Joe's narcotic customers. If this wasn't so tragic, it'd be amusing. Just a minute, just a minute. Who sent for this woman? We did. Why? It's a serious thing to keep important evidence from the district attorney's office. I try to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Reno, I'd like to ask you one question. Did you know this Peretti girl? If you have any doubt about my character, Mr. Phelps, I'd be very happy if you'd look into my record. Spring it, Jake. Here's a record of Mr. Reno that you might like to hear. When Ryan and I went into Watterson's office, the dictaphone was still running. Maybe there's something on that record that Joe would like to hear. This has gone quite far enough. I refuse to listen to any further accusations. Uh, excuse me, I... I'm sorry I lost my temper. You bad boy, now you see what you've done? Of course, there was nothing on the record. Of course not. That one was a blank. We thought you might get clumsy, Joe, so we saved the real record till last. What is this all about? You'll know soon enough. There's a whole lot on here that will be of interest to a jury. Joe, bring me that UP loudspeaker. This one is good. Loudspeaker now. What have you done, Dick? I don't know. How do you spell asphyxiation? How do I know? Go get a dictionary. Well, you don't need to get sore about it. Now then, Mr. Phelps, see if you can recognize this voice.
you satisfied, Mr. Phelps? Boy, there's nothing incriminating here. Brad, I demand that you arrest me. Wait a minute. Listen. Get out of here. Close that door. What do you mean coming into my office like this? I mean business. Give me that paper. Get out of here. Give me that confession. Get out of here before I... There's something to yell about. With the compliments of Joe Reno. Joe Reno? Why, that's ridiculous. That isn't my voice. <laughs> You're not going to frame me. Hey, hey, no, 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 you're a smart boy. My grandmother would have liked you. You never can tell. Well, over the river. Skip the gutter. Come on, let's go. Come on, get him on. Steve, you're wonderful. Not bad at that. You've been a great help to me in this case. I, I suspected you. I knew a smart man like you would see through the whole thing. You? I'll probably have to have you transfer. Don't take it so serious. It was good practice, wasn't it? Listen, give me a front cash spread on that. Hey, Change your story around to suit the facts and make it snap. Come on, Paul. Say, will you quit digging up new facts? I haven't had any lunch. I'll send you in a bale of hay. Oh. City desk, Margaret Bank speaking. Hold on to that Edison story. Wait till you hear this one. And listen, I want you to spell my name right. If you don't, I'm going to make you eat all them extras one at a time. Okay, Flatfoot. Someday. Reno. Reno. Joe Reno. R-E-N-O. Reno. Thanks. I'm sorry I misunderstood you. Anything I can do for you? Yes. Uh -huh. Here. Get this raise put through before I lose it. Sergeant, anything else I can do for you? Yes. But I wouldn't ask you to do anything like that. <laughs> Always kidding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Steve, you must be exhausted. You know, I don't feel so good. I think I'll have a little shot. Haven't got time. See you later. Necessary. Have a little shot yourself. Why, see the tea. I can take it and leave it alone. Gee, Steve, that's marvelous. It wasn't bad after the first couple of times. Oh, well, you did. I've been looking all over for you. Listen, I found a new joint. Where one may sip the boiling pole. Well, I don't know, Dick. I, uh, I may not be able to join you. There's a big plate of liver and onions left over from last night. I'm waiting. I'm not a bad cook, really. Well, I coming? You get out of here. What are you trying to do? Break up a man's home? Home? Oh, this pleasure and all this well. 